<laughs> this is probably the most exciting video I've ever filmed on my channel and I'm introing it now even though obviously I'm well past 12 weeks but I'm introing it and outroing it at the same time basically because I think I did forget to do an intro I think I just started it at my first scan and it's not going to make a lot of sense so I wanted to basically quickly do like a little bit of a I, I honestly pregnancy brain already like I've lost my train of thought I just basically want to explain what happened because I do talk about loss and miscarriage and stuff like that in this video so if that's a trigger for you then please don't watch this because I do talk about it throughout the vlog and that's why I'm sort of saying this quite matter of fact now because I do I've already talked about it in quite a bit of detail in the vlog but I don't want to just suddenly go into it like I'm talking about it like you already know because I haven't obviously filmed an intro so basically I fell pregnant for the first time it was well I don't know when exactly but it was September um and I literally then had a loss early October like literally I must have been four or five weeks it's what's called as a chemical pregnancy is the like technical terms for it basically means a loss that's within the first five weeks so it's basically a very very early miscarriage so that happened like early October which luckily I didn't have to sort of share online because I'd actually had the Florida vlogs all bulked up so I actually didn't have to show my face online throughout that whole period which was really really helpful um because then I could just kind of like go through it um without having to not that i obviously have to post on youtube because obviously as you know i did take a massive break off that was during the first trimester um but yeah then i then fell pregnant literally the same month october again later in that month i literally didn't have a period in between i literally fell pregnant straight away i ovulated straight away which i'm so lucky that that happened because i know that that's not always the case i think because it was such an early loss that my body hadn't really like gone through too many changes at that point like obviously i already had all the hormones but i don't think they'd actually do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm trying to say? So yeah, then I literally fell pregnant straight away. So I basically did half of the first trimester of another pregnancy and then I had like two weeks between, one one week of which I probably still did have some of the hormones because I remember still having a lot of the symptoms, like even after I'd had the loss. Um, so basically pretty much felt, felt pregnant and <laughs> been pregnant since probably middle, early of September. So yeah, no, early September probably. I don't actually know the dates exactly, but yeah, either way, I've been pregnant since September. This pregnancy's been since October, which is crazy that your body can, like, do that straight away. Like, I feel so grateful that that happened for me because I'm so lucky that, obviously, I'm not lucky I had a loss because it's the worst thing you could ever imagine. Like, I can't even explain it without getting too emotional, but I feel lucky that I then managed to fall pregnant again so quickly because I know that some people literally wait years and years and years, and honestly, I feel so sorry for people that that's their situation because I just can't even imagine how hard that is let alone like going through multiple multiple miscarriages one is hard enough but yeah so this pregnancy has been since October I actually found out very early November I think literally very very early November and again I found out so early because I was just a serial tester and <laughs> tested well before the two-week wait which is obviously if you know if you've been trying for a baby you'll know what the two-week wait is but um I did not wait two weeks I was testing and I think I actually test positive on like day nine nine days past ovulation which is quite early to test positive again um but it was like really faint obviously and then it gets darker but yeah so this pregnancy has been since about October I won't say the exact date I'm due because honestly that's been a mind whoa, minefield <laughs> got there in the end because obviously that's what made it so difficult I had to go for early dating scans because obviously usually when you're pregnant you work out your due date from your the first day of your last period and obviously I didn't have a period in between two pregnancies so I didn't have a due date for so long they sort of gave me an estimate of what they think it could be but then it actually got changed quite a bit forward when I went for my 12 week scan yesterday I thought I was 12 like just over 12 weeks yesterday they put me forward to 14 so yeah around 14 I'm not going to say the exact numbers but I'm due in July again not going to say the exact date obviously but I'm due in July so it's gonna be a little summer baby so yeah I'm really really excited to share this with you and I don't know like Obviously, I understand not everyone's cup of tea is like mum baby content, and obviously, it's not going to be baby content for a long time still. But yeah, I think this probably will be quite a bit of my content. I would say just because it's such an exciting time of my life, and obviously, I've I've wanted this for such a long time. I'm so I'm so excited. But obviously, I understand that's not everyone's cup of tea. So I will I will keep to like hauls and just you know what I mean like vlogs and normal content as well um but yeah thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully when it jumps around it makes sense because it really does jump around like because I also have HG really bad sickness I didn't vlog a lot of like actual things I end up just vlogging like talking to you guys because honestly it's been so hard to vlog 
when I've been feeling so bad. Um, so yeah, I know it's a bit jumpy and it might not make sense, but I still want to share it just because I feel like it's quite an honest and raw first trimester vlog and it's not all rainbows and joy and do you know what I mean? Like it, it's very realistic. And to be honest, as much as I hate using the word, kind of miserable and I feel like that's such a horrible thing to put out there because I'm so grateful for this pregnancy but honestly it has been quite miserable with how rough I've been feeling like I've been in and out of hospital it's just not been the greatest but I think I do explain quite a bit of that in the vlog so yeah I obviously haven't watched this through yet so hopefully it makes sense but yeah I'm just gonna shut up now and let you get into it <laughs> okay hopefully I've already inserted like a clip of me explaining the situation because I don't have time to now I've got to leave at eight and it's ten two but I'm just about to go to my first scan I can't believe it I literally oh, I can't even talk about it now because I just get emotional but yeah I'm going for my first this is actually an NHS scan which again hopefully I've just explained why I've had to have this um so hopefully you'll understand um but yeah this is an NHS scan I got referred to urgently after my first appointment I actually do have a private one on Saturday as well um I think I'm still going to go to it I was thinking about cancelling it but I think I'm still going to go to it just because Dan can't come to this one because he's at work so I'm thinking Obviously, it wouldn't be fair that I see the baby, well, I hopefully see the baby now, and he doesn't see the baby for, like, weeks. So, yeah, we're still going to do both, but this is going to be the first time I've, to be honest, like, obviously, I've done a million tests, right? I've, I've gone to midwife appointments, but it's like, I'm, in my head, I'm like, no one's actually confirmed this. Like, I mean, they have, because obviously, like, the nurses, like, midwives send me and everything. And obviously these tests can't be that faulty, but <laughs> it still doesn't feel like anyone's actually confirmed that there's actually a bit. Well, I mean, this is what we're going to find out today. Like, obviously, if the baby's actually okay in there, fingers crossed he is. I'm saying he. Fingers crossed they are. Um, yeah, I don't actually know it's a he, by the way, guys, obviously. <laughs> That's just my intuition. Um, but yeah, I've got my pack. I don't actually know if you should bring these to scans with you, but I'm just going to bring them anyway. Because I did say bring them to every appointment. I don't know. I'm just going to bring them anyway because it's better to have them than not have them. But yeah. I've got to go, I've got to go get my water bottle so I can drink loads of water before I get there but it's fine because it's like an hour and a half journey so, well it's not an hour and a half journey but that's how long we're allowing because of traffic, it's actually only about 40 minute journey. Um, but yeah, I don't want to be late so yeah, I'm going to do that, I'm not, obviously I can't film at the scan but I will show you the pictures and obviously hopefully everything's okay and I'll um, talk about it when I get home. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll have some pictures to show you. Okay, I just got back from the hospital and I'm just gonna like vlog this bit while me talking about it whilst I've still got it all in my brain. Um, I don't have pictures to show you because basically I thought today I was seven weeks. That's going, I <laughs> hopefully I've already explained about what happened last month, but that's going from my last cycle, which if you've, if I've already explained it, obviously I, I didn't think that counted, I didn't know. So that's why we went for this dating scan today. So, going from that, I should have been seven weeks, but again, we didn't know if that was the right thing to go from. Uh, so, they first of all, they did uh, like a just normal over the stomach ultrasound. Straight away, nothing, even I could see there was nothing there, and straight away, my heart dropped because I was like, that's exactly what I was expecting because of my past. Like, I just knew. I've, I just had this feeling like it wasn't going to be good news. Anyway, so she was like, don't, don't stress yet, let's do an internal ultrasound, which straight away I was like, I haven't shaved didn't even have a shower this morning when I left because I was in a rush so I was like great yeah had an, had an internal ultrasound before and it was horrible because I have my endometriosis everything is already quite sensitive and like not in a great place in there so anytime you start probing around it's just not comfortable um not that a like internal ultrasound's that comfortable anyway but as in for me it was especially uncomfortable so I was like great that's exactly what I want but obviously if that meant getting some more clarity it was worth it so they did the internal ultrasound and straight away could see the gestational sac, which was good. Um, and they could see the yolk, is it called the yolk sac? I think it's called the yolk sac. Um, but there was, she can't see a heartbeat yet. So she's saying that it should hopefully just be that it, it's two weeks uh, like early. So she thinks that from the measurement, it looks like I'm around five weeks, not seven. Um, which you don't always see a heartbeat at that, at that week anyway, I think. But she thinks she could see like a small flicker. Um... So yeah, it's kind of like, it's not really what I wanted to, to see or to hear because I haven't come away with anything because she said that it, it's not, it can't be counted as a viable pregnancy until um, they see a, like a heartbeat. So she can't even put it in the system. She can't give me a due date or anything like that until it, like it's, it's, it's not counted as viable yet. So yeah, it hasn't, I haven't walked away from this feeling great because it's just now I've just got to wait. So she's, they're going to do a rescan in two weeks from today. So I've just got to wait two weeks. 
and try not to get stressed which is going to be so difficult because it's like how can I not but the worst news of it all is she she, she asked if I've been getting any pain and I said yes um so she said I'm going to check your ovaries because obviously you have endometriosis straight so she did that straight away she said have you had surgery for this and I said yeah two years ago and basically my endometriosis has got so much worse like worse than it was even before my surgery um to the point where my oh, without going into too much graphic detail both my ovaries are stuck to organs they shouldn't be and different organs so i think it's my i think it's my left one that's stuck to the top of my uterus and then my right one stuck to my bowel so like complete different places and they're being pulled apart and obviously as as my uterus is expanding with pregnancy it's pulling and moving it's pulling my ovary with it and i've got adhesions all over my organs all over my bladder everything so my endometriosis is really really not in a good place and she did say that it shouldn't affect the pregnancy like i am pregnant now so it shouldn't affect that it's i think it's more like it affects your chances of getting pregnant like have you been able to ovulate and release the egg so i've done that part so hopefully it shouldn't affect it but it's more just like and she even said to me, she was like, it, it's a good job you've fallen pregnant, like, earlier. As in, like, obviously not early, but, like, I'm still quite young at 23. But she was like, it is a good job you have fallen pregnant at 23. Because she says, she said if you'd waited a couple more years, it, my chances might have been... Well, she can't say that I wouldn't have fallen pregnant because people with endometriosis, you can still fall pregnant. And even people with, like, stage 4 endometriosis can fall pregnant. So it's not that I wouldn't have been able to fall pregnant in a couple of years. It's just... It, it would have been a lot harder to fall pregnant um so that's good news i'm really happy that i have fallen pregnant earlier and i always knew that in myself right that clip was just getting too long yeah i always knew that i needed to start trying for a baby earlier than maybe i originally had sort of thought when i was younger um so i'm glad that that's happened and i've basically just got to wait two weeks and hopefully the heart starts beating and gets stronger strong enough to see it in two weeks and count it as a viable pregnancy and then we can go from there and i'll know my due date and yeah i'm a little bit gutted because again i thought i was seven weeks and i potentially am only five weeks um which is really a tr super thing to be upset over but it's like i would have been 12 weeks at christmas and i was like i can tell my family like i can tell my extended family at christmas and like, i don't have to keep it a secret anymore um and now it's like i'm going back two weeks and I know everyone says pregnancy goes so fast, but I'm finding this so ridiculously slow. I think that's because of my anxiety, because of what happened last month. And now it's like, this is like, although it's not bad news, it's also like, it's not smooth sailing. So I feel like each day for me is dragging, like it is going ridiculously slow. So to think that I'm getting put back two weeks and having to go through all that again, just to get to the stage I thought I was already at, is upset me a bit but I, I know it's such a silly thing to get upset about because hopefully like do you know what i mean the most important thing is if this if this is getting this baby stronger and like getting this to be a viable pregnancy so i'm just praying that in two weeks like they do this scan and the heart is like clearly beating stronger because she did say she thinks she could see a little flicker of like what could be the heart starting to beat but it's just she doesn't feel strongly enough that she could confirm that's what it is and put it on my notes. But that's good because it's like a little bit of hope because it's like she thinks she could see. And she showed me and I could see like a little tiny flicker. So hopefully it is just that I'm earlier than I thought I was. And, and if that's if that's what it is and that's not necessarily like bad news, you know what I mean? It's just that's what you'd expect to see for a five-week embryo. But yeah. <sighs> gotta try and de-stress but it's just so difficult as well because it's like i'm really struggling with not telling anyone but it's like i i know like i know you can tell anyone at any time but for me it's like if i tell people now and something bad happens i've then got to tell them that something's bad's happened and it's like i don't know if i'm strong enough to do that again after last month so yeah but i've got given this letter which explains it all um it's currently two millimeters which again is is what a five week embryo would be so yeah i just got to take take the good news i've kind of forgot, i feel like i've got to forget about the endo because she's saying that it won't affect the pregnancy because obviously when you're when you're pregnant endometriosis is basically like put on pause is the way i understand it like it can't grow it can't get any worse um so as long as it doesn't 
affect the pregnancy i've kind of just got to get that out of my mind but that is still upsetting me a bit because although it shouldn't affect the pregnancy it's still a bit gutting for me because it's like i only had this surgery two years ago and i know people that have this surgery once and they're like sorted for the rest of their lives or like they're sorted for like 10 years so it's a bit gutting to know that it only lasted two years for me because it's like is that what my life's going to be like having to have surgery every couple of years um and then obviously the more surgery you have then you get more scar tissue build up and then you get less chance of falling pregnant again so yeah i feel a bit rubbish about that to be honest and i'm quite sad about that but at least it explains the pain because even before i was pregnant i would i did kind of think my endo was getting worse again because the pain i was getting like near my ovaries it it was it was really bad so I, again at least that's validated that and it's explained why you're in pain but it's just frustrating as well because i went to see an endometri endometriosis specialist back in like maybe like april may time this year and they didn't once do not like it's just it's so bizarre to think that this lady could instantly see that my ovaries and everything was stuck just from doing this ultrasound and yet this endometriosis doctor couldn't recommend doing that do you know what i mean like he didn't it, it baffles me it honestly baffles me but it is what it is what's done is done and we just got to keep our fingers crossed that the next two weeks goes fast and yeah just got to try not to get stressed but that's so much easier said than done and if you've been in this position you know that it just consumes you and it just yeah let me know if anyone else was like it goes so slow because all everyone tells you is it goes so fast it goes so fast and it's like it is not going fast it is not going fast at all but yeah i thought i'd update you with that for now um i guess i'll do my next update when in two weeks time because i did have a private scan booked for this saturday but i'm gonna have to postpone that now because there's no point doing that in the same situation and i've got like my my mother-in-law and all that coming to that. i'm not gonna sit there with doing an, an internal ultrasound it's worse enough i have my mum there today because i didn't obviously didn't know i was having an internal one um so yeah i'm not going through that again <laughs> in a few days time so i'm gonna postpone that postpone that maybe for like maybe like three four weeks time so we've got one just before christmas so yeah i'll probably just update you guys again in two weeks time or if there's anything else to update you on in the meantime i i kind of do want to like also like update you on mundane things because i watch these first trimester vlogs and it's all just like scan positive scan positive like do you know what i mean it's like realistically i've spent the last two three weeks throwing up every day like this is the first time i put makeup on do you know what i mean this is not accurate this is not how i've been looking my hair is like completely knotted because i've just been shoving it up to throw up like it's not it's not fun and you're so lucky if you've had a like a nice first trimester um so yeah i'm not saying i'm gonna be vlogging me throwing up obviously not but i just mean like i'm gonna update you with like symptoms and like the realistic side of it as well and the fact that i am exhausted and at the moment i need like 10 hours sleep just to function and yeah honestly it is so hard to be going through this first trimester and not tell your work like workplace and like not just that like other people like i've been seeing my grandparents and it's like i'm ridiculously ill and it's like i'm trying to keep it a secret and it's just so difficult to try and function and live your life as normal when it is not normal at all um so yeah but that's all i'm gonna have to update you on for now um and i'll just catch up with you when there's something to catch up on <laughs> I realise I haven't added to this vlog. Well, actually, I think it's probably only been a week or two. But, um, yeah, yeah, it would have been about a week because I had my scan a week ago today. So I've got one more week until my next scan, which will confirm that everything is definitely all right. And hopefully I was just measuring small. But honestly, the days go so slow. Like anyone who says pregnancy goes fast, I do not understand what they mean. I guess that's like if you're having like a perfect pregnancy, but like, oh my God. If you've got anxiety in your pregnancy from previous losses or if you're just not feeling well the days go so slow to me like for the last week i've been throwing up it started as like the first couple of ones were like every other day but like in between i was just nauseous and i wasn't actually throwing up but now this is the third day in a row that i'm throwing up um it seems to be like worse in the mornings but like kind of goes stays all day but then like dinner time is kind of like the only time i can eat and not throw it back up but i have noticed and this is really bad because it's so unhealthy but the one thing i sort of do manage to like keep in most of is just chips which is so bad and annoying like why can't it be like broccoli fruit or something like that that i can stomach but i literally salty chips is the only thing that i can pretty much keep down apart from when it gets to dinner like dinner for some reason like by the evening or at least this has been the pattern the last few days anyway by dinner time i can usually not throw it back up so i'm trying to have like healthier dinners um but yeah i tend to have chips most days for lunch at this point because it's all i can stomach and i feel awful because i'm like it's just not nutritious but at the same time i'm like i'm too scared to not eat anything because otherwise 
I'll eat stuff, I'll throw it back up and I don't even know if I'm actually getting and keeping any of that in my body and then I'm just worried that I'm going to lose too much weight or not be giving enough food. I know babies don't need much at this point, like you don't need to eat any extra, but you still need to make sure you're hitting your usual like calorie intake. You can't be obviously doing less than that because you're not on this diet. Um, so I'm, I don't, there's no way I'm hitting my usual, I think my usual calorie is like 1,900 just to maintain my weight, which is obviously what I want to do. There's no way I'm hitting that without going to get like chips and all stuff like that because otherwise I'm just literally throwing up. Like all I've had today is a packet of crisps which I managed to slowly eat but then threw it back up. And like even liquids, I'm throwing it back up liquids. I have a cup of tea, throw, it, throw that up. So I'm also like really worried I'm going to get dehydrated. So I'm just going to I'm just gonna listen to my body and go get some chips and try not to beat myself up about it. But yeah, I just thought I'd add that little entry to it because it's just realistic. Like I feel rough like i literally i it's not even just the sickness and like everything else you just you just deal with because you know it's going to be worth it at the end but it's the anxiety for me is like i literally been counting down the days until my scan next week just to hopefully get good news and it's literally dragging like it's been a week and it's feeling like it's dragging so much but yeah i don't want to stand on here and cry because it's like this is i don't know such a, obviously a blessing and I'm so grateful for it, so I really don't want to be miserable. But it's just difficult not to be at this point. But yeah, hopefully things start to get a bit better. But I thought, you know what, for now, I'm just going to go get myself some chips and let myself feel miserable. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll check in with you probably next week at my scan and let you know how that goes. <laughs> Look at the absolute state of me. Like, <laughs> I mean, it is a first trimester vlog, to be fair. Um, but I thought I'd update the vlog because I haven't actually, I don't think I've actually documented anything for a few weeks. I think the last time was when I was about to have my second scan to check that everything was okay. Because the first scan, I think I explained this, the first scan, um, there was no heartbeat. And like, they think, they thought it was just that I was early, which luckily it was. Went back two weeks later and that scan showed a heartbeat, which was great. That was at eight weeks. I'm now 11 weeks and five days. So I'm, I'm almost 12 weeks. So this video will actually probably be going out quite soon, but the last few weeks, I mean, to be honest, I've, I think I spoke about it already because it's been about since week five, week six, that this sickness has just been ridiculous, but especially the last few weeks and it's also been Christmas and stuff. So I've just been a bit busy, a bit preoccupied. And I haven't wanted to come on and literally just be crying the whole time, which is literally what would have happened. But I thought I'd still give you a bit of an update of like what's happened over the last few weeks. So... Basically, like I said, the sickness, I've been uncontrollably vomiting, not just nauseous, vomiting, about anywhere between five to like 10 times a day, which they say even like three to four times is a lot. Um, and mine is without a doubt, like today I'm already on number five. Um, and today's actually a good day, like not a so good day, I've thrown up five times, but as in that's like the least out of all the days recently. So. I'm gonna call today like a better day um but yeah it's just unbearable honestly it's made me, to, be, to be quite honest it's made me quite depressed um which sounds an awful thing to say when you're pregnant i don't know if depressed is the word i'd use i'd actually use the word miserable which again doesn't sound great when you're pregnant because everyone just expects you to be happy and like excited and, and just grateful all the time and don't get me wrong i am grateful I don't think I could say I'm excited just because of what's happened in the past, um, which I think I've already spoke about. When you've already gone for a loss, I just think it's ridiculously hard to be excited because it just doesn't feel real. You're just constantly waiting for the other shoe to drop, um, especially with all this sickness. It's just like there's no excitement yet because, A, I think because in the first trimester, there's not, not a whole lot happens in terms, obviously loads happens in terms of the babies growing, but as in like, you have to keep it a secret from a lot of people still. You don't know that everything's okay because you actually wait a long time between scans um and you you know it's not like you're gonna find out the gender like you're not having a baby shower yet so like there's not like loads and loads of exciting things other than the initial like finding out and telling your close friends and family but yeah so i wouldn't say i've been excited i would honestly use the word miserable and i feel awful saying that because i am so grateful but when you have hg which is what i was also going to get on is getting diagnosed i guess with hg um which uh, hypermesis hypermesis i can't say the whole word but basically yeah i think you'll probably know it's basically extreme morning sickness you lose weight you can't keep anything down some days i literally can't even keep water down i've lost 
so much weight um and i've just been so so worried i actually went to hospital was it yesterday no the day before yesterday because i went to a midwife appointment and they just couldn't draw any blood they were like you're so dehydrated we just can't even draw any blood so i went to hospital and had fluids and they managed to get some blood off the fluids so now i'm all bruised up in the arm i don't know if you can even see that sorry if you're a bit squeamish but like i'm all bruised up in this arm and that arm because they were just basically, they were basically getting, because they couldn't get any blood, they were basically like, it was like they were knitting in my arm trying to find like the vein and get blood out. But yeah, so this week in particular has not been great. I mean, to be honest, Christmas has just been, I was just throwing up constantly all over Christmas. And when you're just constantly throwing up, like it's very difficult to be happy because it's just, it's miserable. It really is miserable. If you've gone through HG or just really bad morning sickness, then you will understand it is just miserable. Um... But yeah, like I said, I'm 11 weeks plus five. Oh, that's something else I want to talk about, anti-sickness tablets. Because I know that people will be like, why didn't you take anti-sickness tablets? I did get offered them from my GP and I literally, I think there was five options. I've tried four out of five. The only reason I haven't tried the fifth one is because they said there's a risk of cleft lip. So obviously I'm not going to take that. Um, so yeah, I've tried all possible four options and none of them worked. Like my sickness is so bad that not even anti-sickness stopped it it didn't even really ease it to be honest at first i thought oh this is easing it a little bit no it just didn't it didn't do anything i was still vomiting like five six times at least a day and it was giving me like the worst headaches i was like it's not even worth it like it's not even stopping me being sick anyway so i just stopped taking it and they gave me an injection of anti-sickness at the hospital a couple days ago again i was straight back to throwing up like it just doesn't seem to work for me which is so annoying so i'm <laughs> basically out of options here um even the doctor said that like i've been wearing these stupid sickness bands like I've, I've, they don't do anything realistically i think it's more of like a placebo thing i just i don't take mine off because it's like i don't know that it's not working like who knows maybe i could be thrown up 20 times if i don't wear this <laughs> it's all in my head but that's what the doctor was like just keep wearing your bracelet i was like yeah okay all right mate <laughs> but yeah that's what's been going on the last few weeks um like I said, I lost had my scan at eight weeks and everything was fine then. But obviously that was nearly four weeks ago now. So I don't actually know if everything's okay. I, I'm i assuming by how ill I've been that everything probably is progressing and growing as it should be. Um, so yeah, I'll have my 12 week scan in, how many days actually is it now? Eight days? Is that right? Yeah, in eight days. It's basically, it's Thursday today and next Friday is my 12 week scan. Which to be fair, I'll probably announce it on social media after that scan and this youtube video will probably go up the following upload day which will be the sunday so yeah you'll actually be seeing this really soon which is weird because i've kept this secret for so long and what i also realized is because i unfortunately had a miscarriage the cycle before this i mean it was very very early but even still i basically did half of that first trimester and then where i fell pregnant again literally like two three weeks later the hormones like for some of those two three weeks the hormones still hadn't fully left me, like I got told that like when you have a miscarriage the hormones don't just instantly leave your body like they are they take a while to like you know get out and stuff so you actually still have like pregnancy symptoms for like i don't know how long but i basically was still having my first trimester pregnancy symptoms from my miscarriage i would say up until probably only a week before i fell pregnant again so I basically only had about a week <laughs> worth of feeling okay and then i was back to this first trimester which obviously i'm so grateful for that i've managed to fall pregnant so quickly again but it's basically meant that i've had to do one and a half first trimesters um and been pregnant since september do you know what i mean it's better yeah basically it's worked out like that so i think that for me that's why this first trimester has felt so long i mean i think most women would say that their first trimester feels like it drags but for me i've almost done two so um i think for me that's why this one feels like it's going so so slowly so i literally cannot wait to announce not even just because because I'm actually quite like, I don't like attention like that, but I'm just, I'd rather it just be out in the open and I can stop hiding it. Like I can wear all the outfits I want to wear. And like when someone comes around, I don't have to try and like keep my distance in case like I'm giving it away. Because I ended up having to tell my extended family over Christmas because on Boxing Day when I saw them, it was just, there was no way I could have hidden it. I've, I've got such a big, well, I say it's a big bump. I think it's mainly bloat, but um, like I look massively pregnant already. I mean, I, I say that and I don't know. You can kind of see this is 11 weeks plus five, but obviously not much is that, not much that is actually going to be bump. It's mainly bloat, but where I have endo, I think that's probably why I look bigger because I suffer with bloat when I'm having an endo flare up anyway. I'm not saying I'm having an endo flare up. I honestly don't know what's going on with my endo. Um, I think I spoke about that in the video as well, didn't I? But oh, honestly, 
this has been a rough first trimester and this is why I also wanted to document this rather than just let this vlog go because this is a realistic first trimester and I feel like you see all these first trimester vlogs and it's like all so joyous and happy and it's like I'm so glad that that's some, some women's experience but that's just not mine it's really not mine and I'm just praying that when I get into the second trimester that it eases but realistically with HG it just won't but at least I'll get to like excite other exciting things like finding out the gender and stuff like that so yeah just trying to stay positive but I wanted to update this vlog and then the next time I update this vlog will hopefully be my 12 week scan which I'm going to try and vlog as much of if I as I can but obviously it's at a hospital um and I'm going with my mum because Dan's working so yeah but I'll definitely talk through and obviously show you a scan picture because I'm not even showing you a scan picture yet because I'm actually at my parents house right now and I don't have a scan picture here but yeah I've got a scan picture obviously it didn't look like much at eight weeks but I'll show you my scan picture from week 12 and hopefully everything will be okay and yeah I'll next update you then but yeah I just wanted to get that off my chest now while I remembered. <laughs> okay guys so I went for my 12 week scan yesterday which is crazy right I have the pictures is that upside down yes it is upside down Holly <laughs> look it actually looks like a baby obviously um but I basically so I thought I was like 12 and a half weeks or something like that obviously like I've never really known the exact date because I didn't have a period in between my two pregnancies but I thought I was about 12 and a half weeks and that's what they sort of measured me at roughly last time turns out they put me forward nearly two weeks so I mean I'm not complaining about that because it means closer to finding out the gender closer to hopefully feeling better hopefully this HGN soon but yeah I can't believe it like they actually look so big even though they're not they're the size of a kiwi i think this week so really tiny still but oh it's just crazy like it makes me so emotional looking at these pictures but yeah we announced it on instagram last night um on my personal one i'm probably gonna announce it on my private one as well not my private on my public one as well i have announced it on youtube as well on a youtube short but you might have missed that because i don't always, obviously i don't post on youtube shorts that often but i thought that was the quickest way to sort of put it out then and obviously this vlog's gonna be going live well you're watching it right now so it's already gone live but yeah, it went really well, the 12-week scan. Honestly, I couldn't have gone better, to be honest. Everything looks healthy. Everything looks fine right now. So yeah, we've just got to keep our fingers crossed that everything stays that way and baby grows as they should. I've kind of changed my mind because this whole time I've been thinking boy, boy, boy. And now I actually think maybe girl. I don't know why. I think it's just because at the scan they had their legs crossed. And I know that's such a sim like stupid thing, but like my niece, she always had her legs crossed at scan. My friend's baby said she, she said she, her baby always had her legs crossed and she's having a girl. So I just think like little things like that. I'm like, mm. and also it kind of looks like she's pouting in one of the pictures. I said, just said she, see? Kind of looks like they're pouting in one of the pictures. So I'm like, mm, it's gonna be a girl. But no, I don't know. I'm still like, I'm, I'm literally 50, 50. Like my intuition completely told me boy. And now it's like, I honestly think it could be, obviously it could be either, but I honestly like, I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to say which one I think it's going to be more now um but only two weeks we'll be able to find the gender out so yeah <laughs> I do a little bump up day I mean I don't really have a massive bump I've been hiding this bump in all my videos so I mean it's not really well I don't know little bump but yeah that's my bump for like nearly 14 weeks so I'm gonna keep doing bump updates might start doing like I might start posting on TikTok more so go follow me over there I'll link that in the description box but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. I know it's been like all over the place and probably not made a lot of sense, but I just filmed when I could and what I could. And yeah, honestly, I did the best I could. I wanted to just show a raw and realistic first trimester that it's literally not all like, as much as it is very exciting, it's it's not all like just joy all the time if you do have HG and you're like anxious because of a loss and stuff like that. So yeah, I wanted to show that and paint like a realistic picture, but I do hope you still enjoyed it. And yeah, I'm so excited to go on this journey and I'm just so excited to share it on here as well. I know that like I don't have massive, massive um, following, but I still feel like I've worked really hard for my YouTube channel and I just feel like I have met a lot of amazing people already. So yeah, I just feel so happy and I share my life on here. So this is obviously going to be a big part of my life. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy them, please leave a like and subscribe and get ready for baby content, still fashion content, still hauls and vlogs and stuff like that. But obviously there's going to be a bit more baby content now because I can actually openly talk about it, which I'm really excited. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.